discretion is advised all over this motherfucking video. Because this story is fucked. <laughs> this happened about six months after I had gotten out of my first long-term relationship. And not just got out, that bitch straight left my ass for another dude. Just so happens that after she was dating the guy for a while, she started missing me. It was crazy because it got to the point where I was out at the Orleans kicking it with friends and she saw me and just ran up on me. Hey Maurice, oh my God, I haven't seen you in so long. Blah, blah, blah. We need to talk more. Matter of fact, we should hang out right now. I'm not gonna lie, I was bitter about the way she did me. So I wanted to kick it with her just so I could rub it in her face. You know, cause I knew she still wanted me back. So we're walking down the street on Tropicana and Decatur to go to a land center to play some video games. And she stops me like halfway there. And she's like, yo, we should just go back to my apartment and we should do this and do that. That's a very widely known fact that you can trick a dude into getting back with you even if you pissed him off, if you give up the butt cheeks. Right? This chick is smart enough to know that. So, she's telling me all the attractive things that we could do in her apartment. I just care about you so much and I love you and blah, 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 blah. And after like two minutes of monologuing about how much she loved me and shit, I make the very obvious statement. Well, if you love me, then why would you leave me for a different dude? That's not love. Fuck you. You grimy as hell. That's messed up what you did. That was speaking my mind. Because this is my first time getting this stuff off my chest since our big breakup. And I've been with this chick for like four years. So it was a really big deal for me. I let her know straight up. You know, like a man. I'm like, look, I'm not going to your house. Okay, we're not having sex. Nothing's going down. Okay, so you're going to play video games or that's it. And that was motherfucking that. You know? So we're riding the bus on our way to her house for sex. I came so fast, man. The mind is strong, but but the flesh is weak. It's just so weak. <laughs> we get to her house, and I stay the night over there. The night was basically just spent her repeatedly apologizing to me. Uh, if you get my drift. <laughs> we... We didn't get much sleep, we really didn't. The next morning, we wake up, you know, we apologize to each other a couple more times. We decided to go get something to eat. Apparently, all the activities that had taken place the night prior, we had worked up a rather large hunger. And she was the type of chick as where she didn't shop much, so she didn't have anything in her fridge. Now, of course, since neither one of us at the time had a car, we had to find a place to get some really freaking good food. Now, her apartment, was on Sahara and Decatur out here in Las Vegas, also on Sahara and Decatur, legitimately like five to 10 feet away from her apartment complex was this huge shopping mall type thing, but all the places are outdoors, it's just a whole bunch of stores. One of those stores just so happened to be a fast food chain called Aloha Food. Now, that's not the name of the place, but I changed the name, you know, I mean, we sued or whatever the hell. Anyone from Vegas who's listening to this, more than likely already knows what the place is called. We go in there, man, we sit down, we order our food, we're talking, we're bullshitting, we're just catching up, because you know, there wasn't no talking happening the night before. <laughs> Bad joke. Okay, so anyway, while we're sitting there and we're catching up, we get that itch that we both just so happen to want to scratch. Me, I'm a super adventurous type of dude. I love doing shit that I know I'm not supposed to be doing, especially where I know I'm not supposed to be doing that. Her, she was more of the quiet girl, which made her more susceptible to me having her go and doing shit she's not supposed to be doing in places where she knows she's not supposed to be doing it at. Quiet girls love to get an adventurous type of shit. So, I go into the bathroom and I notice that their, uh, their bathroom locks from the inside, you know? And I slap my hands together and I start rubbing them, you know, like Butters, AKA Captain Chaos on South Park, the stick of truth. I'm like, mm -hmm. so, so I go back into the dining area and I get her and I relay this information to her that the bathroom locks from the inside. She gets up, she starts walking back to the bathroom. I get up and I follow her as well. We were in the bathroom, we locked the door. I'm pretty sure since a lot of you guys out there are adults, you guys know how it is when you rekindle that flame with somebody that you have dated for a long time. Shit just goes down. It's crazy in the streets of love, you know? At least for the first two weeks or three weeks after y'all get back together. So, <laughs> so, we're in the bathroom, man. You know, we locked the door, you know. <laughs> 
part where it gets viewer discretion is advised like a motherfucker off up in this bitch. If you don't want to hear no crazy nasty shit, I suggest you run. <laughs> because it's going down. And I'm coming in hot. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna edit that out. That doesn't sound good. We take her pants off, I get her up on the sink, and I'm giving her mouth to vagina resuscitation. And now that I think about it, that probably wasn't a very good analogy, because it makes it sound like I'm blowing into her birth canal. <laughs> oh man, that's, damn, that sounds unpleasant. Now, we're gonna call this girl Crystal. So I'm making with the mouth sex on Crystal, on top of the sink, three, four minutes into it, somebody knocks on the freaking door. Doom, 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 doom. Is anybody in there? I'll take my mouth off of her. I'm like, oh, I'm in here. Four or five minutes later, again, somebody comes to the door and knocks. Is anybody in here? You know, I gotta stop again. I'm like, look. And then they leave and I go back to what I was doing. Four or five minutes later, again, somebody comes to the door. This time they're knocking hard. So. Based on the fact that this is more than likely a Sunday, and when I came in here, there were no customers in there, and the fact that the knocks have gotten escalatingly harder and more violent, these are more than likely the employees. So, again, I'm like, I'm in here, and I say it with a little bit more bass in my voice, because I'm getting pissed the fuck off. I'm busy, and we go back to doing what we're doing. Now, as a red-blooded American, I enjoy internet porn which sounds exceptionally lonely, but I'm pretty sure anyone who's watching this video who is of age, it's just a rule of the internet. It's like the, the first thing you do for like the first seven months when you have the internet is watch nakedness. <laughs> With that being said, to me, the craziest thing you see in porn in general is when a chick like squirts. You know, when I was younger, I used to see that shit and I'm like, what the hell? Like, that doesn't happen. Wasn't that bitch like a unicorn or some sort of other mythological beast as to where she's able to do that? Because that's just not fucking normal. Of course, I said that shit until I started dating real heavy and then you see some things and shit happens to you. It's like, oh shit, that's not mythological at all. Do it again. No. <laughs> okay, so needless to say, this chick starts doing that shit and I mean waterfalling on the freaking floor, man. I'm like, where is this even coming from? Like, for real? <laughs> but of course I'm not tripping because I've dated this girl for like four or five years. With that being said, I already knew that this is how her body works. So I'm still doing my thing with the chick or whatever, man. And the employees are damn near trying to kick down the door. And while they're banging on the door this hard, I hear them yelling some shit in some foreign language like freaking Mexican or some shit. They're like, yeah. and then you hear them talking like they're talking amongst each other. Yes, blah, 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 like whatever they're saying. So I know that they know something is afoot. So if we finish up what we doing or whatever, washed up a bit, and now we've got a horrifying problem. The floor was 100% hard tile, and the results of our little excursion is all over the freaking floor. So much so that you would think something had leaked like a faucet or something. It was that much. The employees are still banging on the freaking door. I'm freaking out, I'm like, oh shit. So of course my first thought is, we've gotta clean up and we've gotta do it freaking quick, like hurry up. The closest thing to something absorbent inside that bathroom was the toilet paper next to the toilet and the paper towels inside of the paper towel dispenser. I start waving my hand profusely in front of the paper towel dispenser to get as many paper towels as I can. Crystal goes over to the freaking roll of toilet paper and just rips it off the thing and just starts slathering the floor in it. We don't stop until every single piece of paper cloth is out of both the dispenser and off the roll of freaking toilet paper. We basically just drop it all on the floor and start using our feet to mop it up. Now, after we get done, all the paper towels and all the toilet papers all used up, it's all done. Unfortunately for us, it wasn't enough to soak it all up. It was a lot less drenched than it was from a second ago, but it's still wet. And it's with the injury, apparently they had not mopped their floor in a long time because the pattern that we had tried to clean the floor in, the floor is dirt streaked and it's still wet. 
Anybody out there who's ever tried to mop a floor with clean water on a dirty floor knows what I'm talking about. We don't even attempt to throw the cloth away because it's too much for the trash can. We don't attempt to put the to toilet paper in the freaking toilet because it's too much. So we just wait until the knocking stops, right? And when the knocking finally stops a couple of minutes later, I tell her, you go out first. If I get caught in the bathroom, I can defend myself because I can tell these people are going to be pissed. She's a girl. I don't want her to get trapped in the bathroom with some pissed off employees. So Crystal opens the door, fixes herself, and walks out basically as casually as you can walk out of that situation into the dining area. I wait about two or three seconds and I follow suit. I do the same thing. Now there's a little hallway you gotta walk down to get to the dining area from the bathroom. While we're walking down that hallway, I hear behind me rapid footsteps running in the opposite direction. And then a couple of seconds later, I hear someone slip hard as all living shit and smash into something in the bathroom and start cursing their ass off. While that person's cursing, I hear like three or four other foreign language people responding to that person's cursing. I, I do not speak whatever language they spoke, but I could tell that number one, the dude who ran in the bathroom slipped and busted his ass on all of Crystal's ejaculation, it's grossly apparent that he is screaming for his co-workers to come in and see what shape that the bathroom is left in. Man, we don't even look back. We communicate on an almost telepathic level as to where no words were ever said. Man, we take off, man. We basically dive onto the fucking desk that we were sitting at. We don't even take the food. She grabs her purse, I grab my phone. I don't know why I left it out there. And we just start out of the freaking Aloha food place. Bust the right and just start sprinting. Man, tell me why. While we're running down the shopping complex, we hear rapid, heavy footsteps behind us. I turn around, because I'm curious, I can't help it. I turn around to see like five cooks chasing me down, cussing profusely, and the dude in the front has a fucking knife. Not only does he have a fucking weapon, but he's also wearing an extremely dirty uniform with liquid streaks and dirt streaks all over the front of him. He looks so angry. You know, we just kept running until we could not run anymore. Luckily enough, we didn't have cars, so we didn't have to go back to the parking lot to get our vehicles or anything. But damn, man, it's it has been a long time, and I still have not been back to that Aloha food place. The place is on Sahara Indicator. It has a big sign in front of it. If you go there, man, you go inside there, they have one bathroom and it's unisex and it's locked from the inside. Uh, I have not been back since and they have some of the best food in all of freaking Vegas. It'll get to the point where I'm starving and I'm passing by the place and I'm like, you know what? I think I'll go to the place 30 miles down the road. It's fine. I just ate two days ago. I'm not that hungry. <laughs> And what's really funny is, me and that girl are still kind of friends. I just talked to her about two weeks ago. I'm pretty sure she watches a lot of my videos. And I'm more than sure she watches my story times. I've been holding out on telling a lot of my crazier stories on my channel. You know, but man, I'm man, I'm just like, man, fuck it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and comment down below. I tend to conversate with everybody in the comment section. You already know that. Without further ado, bless Miss HD up out of this mother. I don't even think I put the stars above you. But if I catch your ass, I'm gonna fucking gut you. That's how you know it's really love. It's cause I need to cut you. Cut the trap, my nigga. I'm done with this bitch.